Hey, this is Rob Duart, and uh, I'm going to show you how you can take this design for a chair from Victor Papanek's 1973 book, Nomadic Furniture, uh, and translate it into a Fusion 360 model that has some uh, parametric elements. So this original drawing was not designed by uh, Papanek, but it was it's in the book, and along with some other things like like a, a chair, a, a car seat that you can make for your child out of cardboard, things like that, <laughs> things that actually translate pretty well to laser cutting and CNC routing, uh, lots of panels being put together. So you can see this is just three pieces that slot together, and uh, so we're basically designing this with the idea that we use a CNC router to cut it out of plywood. So by uh, adding parameters to the mix, we can do things like change the thickness of the plywood in our model, and uh, that'll change the slot size, obviously, and everything will adapt. And then also to be able to change the width of the chair, so sometimes it's a couch and sometimes it's a chair, sometimes it's a park bench, that kind of thing. So um, start out by first changing my units to inches, and uh, and then I'll add those parameters that I was talking about just to get that out of the way. So the width of the chair is, uh, I'm going to say 30, not quite a chair, not quite a couch. And then uh, I'll say the thickness of the material is going to be 3 quarters of an inch plywood. And then um, I'll add this tolerance, and that's basically because we have lots of slots. We want to make sure that they have enough wiggle room to fit together. So I'm going to make it one hundredth of an inch. I'll start the sketch because that's basically the uh, the heart of this whole thing. It kind of defines how all the parts relate. So um, I'll add dimensions. I'll hit D to add a dimension here. That's 30 inches, uh, and this is 24. Some of these measurements are coming from the drawing. I don't think it's necessarily complete, so some of them I'll just kind of make up. But the idea is, I think, originally that it would come from a single sheet of plywood, which is still possible here. So I'll add the two elements, one of which is kind of this uh, back back of the chair, and then the other is the uh, part that your butt goes on. So we'll call that the bottom of the chair. And uh, if you click on these two faces, we can dimension those, and that should be thickness, that's the thickness of our uh, plywood, and that's coming from the um, <clears throat> user parameter that I set earlier. Okay, so there are a couple constraints that I want. One is that I want this bottom point here to be coincident with the bottom of this side panel, and I want this point to be coincident with uh, the back so that they um, kind of meet, meet together and there's not a space here for your loose change to fall through when you sit down. A couple other things are uh, can add a dimension from here to here and just say that the little bit that sticks out beyond the side of the chair is uh, two inches and uh, maybe the same here the, the your distance from your back to uh, well the, the the top of the back to the uh, top of the side of the chair is going to be two inches so I'm just making those up I think and then um, I do really care though about the distance from this bottom, like where your butt sits in here, how far that is off the floor. That's kind of a crucial detail. So to make that happen, I'll just draw a line that goes from uh, that side over to that point. I'll click on it and hit X to make it a construction line. Then I'll make sure that it's parallel to the bottom of this uh, side. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can add a dimension from here to here and be very clear that the distance uh, from your bum to the uh, floor is 11 inches. Uh, we can do the same kind of thing for the distance from your leg or like where your leg kind of, uh, well, I guess it's not where your leg hangs over, but we'll just, we'll just use that as the measure. Uh, this point right here where the seat bottom starts to stick out uh, will make that a construction line and we'll dimension that to be uh, I think probably 11, no we had 11 already, 15 inches. It's starting to look more chair-like already. Uh, are we missing any other dimensions? I think we need to know how far this point is to the back of the chair so uh, let's add that. We might be able to just do that without a construction line but um, I find them to be helpful but let's see if I just take that point and here I can give that a dimension without construction lines, so 12 inches for that. And I think the last detail is uh, kind of a similar dimension as, as the one we've got here, but for the back of the chair. So I will 
add a line there and make it a construction line and I'll dimension it so that it's four inches so I've just reclined a little bit um, I think I think this is most of what we need uh, mm -hmm. okay I'm gonna call this resolved now the reason why it's not uh, actually these these blue lines mean that they're not constrained fully so the reason why they're not turning black is because it's just, this model is still kind of floating around in space I can still move it around I can't remove the the individual elements but uh, it can move around on this this canvas so um, I normally start drawing from the origin but I've just recently learned that that may not be ideal because uh, because of maybe maybe bugs but um, what I'll do instead is I'll just say the edge of the chair to there should be just some round number like 10 inches and the same the distance from here to here should be uh, well, let's move it down first the distance from here to here should also be 10 inches so now you can see everything's turned black and I can't move it around anymore because that would violate this uh, these dimension constraints so I think we're all set the only other thing is if you look at the original uh, drawing for this you can see that th all of the pieces are slotted so that's how the whole thing goes together and um, so there is a slot and this may be hard to understand at the moment but there's going to be a slot in the side that goes uh, from here to here and I'm picking the midpoints of these so there to there so if there's if they're sliding together why not make it the the middle of the piece I suppose you could do it differently but um, if that if those lines don't make sense they will in a moment I'll hit stop sketch and uh, if I look at this I think uh, I'm ready to start just extruding the uh, the side panel so let me do uh, press pull I'll select all of the faces that are not going to be uh, slots and I will just drag them over to uh, not one inch but thickness of my material and I'll hit OK uh, that is actually going to become a component I want all these things to become components and uh, so I just converted that body to a component and I'll call it side I need a second side obviously so I can copy this component and paste it in my root component so get side one side two and I'll just leave it in place and the reason why I'm going to do that is because if I hide side two what I what I actually am going to do I learned this trick from uh, one of the Autodesk employee tutorial videos which is pretty amazing how to make a, a laptop uh, stand which I'm not I'm not so interested in that but I'm interested in this trick which is uh, how to get these to be a certain distance apart and have it correspond to my uh, user parameters so the way that I can do that is actually to make a joint between this piece and if I turn side 2 back on I can make the other side of that joint over here and um, so actually I want them to go the other way but I want them to go uh, well, okay that's fine um, the offset is the key here so the key, the offset will actually be the width of my chair so that spaces them apart and locks them in that position uh, I do want it to be the well, let's put it back at zero so this is good I want it to be the width to be, actually be the internal space between the two right so I don't care if they're uh, their width distance from end to end on the outsides I actually want my seating area to correspond to that width variable so this looks right okay I've got two sides now I need my backs so um, let's uh, just the one back let's uh, turn the sketch back on and uh, just extrude what I think the back is going to be so that's these profiles here and the distance it's not just going to, and so it's, it's all negative numbers which is a little inconvenient so I'll just put uh, parentheses here and everything I do will be inside there so it's not just the width it's also the it's the width plus uh, the thickness of the material times two plus uh, an extra overhang so I wanted to overhang uh, off of the sides of the this thing by another two inches so that's going to be uh, four inches total okay so this is my big formula and uh, I'll make it a new component and hit OK okay if I turn the sides back on we'll see where we are 
obviously it's off, but that's okay. Uh, first rename it to back and let's move it into position. So I'll move it over. Uh, if I move it over just the thickness of the material, that would be right. So I need another two inches after that. So that gives me a hint. It's basically just two inches plus thickness. And that should put me in the right place. If I look at it from the front. They look balanced. I'm not even going to measure them because I'm pretty sure we're right. Okay, so that's the back without the slots yet. So um, I could add the slots right now. So basically, uh, if I hide the sketches, I don't need those at the moment or that sketch. What I want is for... Uh, I want to use combine to target this body and use these bodies as the cutting tools. I'll choose cut, make sure I keep the tools, and I'll hit OK. So if I hide the sides, I've got my slot, two slots, one on each side. OK, I'll hide the back since I'm pretty much done with that. And I'll do the same process for the uh, bottom of the chair. So I'll press pull all of the pieces that make up that bottom. And uh, this is the same thing. I'm going to, in parentheses, just say it's the width plus uh, the thickness times 2 plus another 4 inches. That's also going to be a new component. And I'll hit OK and rename it to bottom. OK, if I bring those sides back, you can see it's in the wrong place, just like the other one. So I'm just repeating everything I just did. And uh, how far did I move it? I think it was 2 plus the thickness of the material. And if we look at it from the front, that looks right. OK, and so I'll do the same thing. I'll combine. And uh, I will use this as the target body and use these two sides as the cutting bodies. Keep the tools and hit OK. If I hide the sides, I have my bottom of the slot in it. So I'm pretty much there. Um, the only thing I need to do now is uh, add my uh, my tolerance in here. So um, let's see. I think uh, if we turn off the um, two sides, we can get an idea of, of uh, what we need to do. So basically, I want all of these sides. I don't need to worry about the backs, right? Like this will be addressed in some other way. But um, Everything actually should fit together perfectly. The only thing we have to worry about is the thickness. So if the thickness of the material isn't exactly 0.75, for example, when we when we actually measure it with a micrometer, then making these actually 0.75 will be a problem because uh, they'll fit too loosely. So um, so what we want to do is have some way of adjusting that. And uh, presumably, we'd do some test on the CNC router beforehand and then get the right tolerance value. Uh, to put in here. So the way we're going to do that is just use press pull. And you can see as soon as I start clicking faces here, it's actually smart enough to know that we're, we want to offset faces. So it changed the tool name for us. And, um, and so I'm going to click all these four outer faces here and the four outer faces here. And I want them to be uh, moved out by negative tolerance, so they're getting bigger. I could see it get bigger. That's how I knew I was right, by putting in negative there. Um, but you know, right now, if I just want to double check, like what if I put in 0.1 and watch what happens down there? They're getting bigger, so I think I did it right. Again, I don't care about the length of them. In fact, that would screw things up. I really just care about the thickness so that I can adjust for different uh, variances in the thickness of the material. So um, that takes care of the slots on the back and the bottom, but there are slots on the sides as well. So I'll take care of those right now in the same way. So I'll press pull and I'll select all of those faces. And I will make the value negative tolerance. OK, so uh, this is it. This is my chair. Now, um, if I wanted to try playing around with the parameters, I can see if uh, making it into a smaller chair works, seems to. Or I can make it into a very long couch, park bench. And uh, let's, let's put it back at 30. 
and I can change the thickness of the material. So if I only had half inch plywood, everything adjusts. I, I imagine you could laser cut it out of foam core and, and all everything should still work. If we look at the size of the uh, slots, we should see them um, as very thin, and they are. Um, it's kind of absurd, so let's put it back to three quarter. And then uh, the tolerance, if I wanted to verify that that seems to be working, I'd say it's actually supposed to be a quarter inch. And then, then take a look at what we've, what we've got here. And, and it looks like it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. It's, it's adding space uh, where it should for those slots. So this is just kind of a quick way to verify that I, I got everything and I did it all right. I think 0.01 is probably closer to reality. So uh, that's about it. Let me know if you have any uh, questions about it. I'll try and answer them. I uh, f always find weird, peculiar things that I can't answer, and uh, so I try and I try and refine it in the video <laughs> and uh, make the right choices. But there's plenty of places to get hung up on this, and that's kind of how you learn to use this particular software package, I think, just by, uh, by making things. And uh, you'll learn a lot more if you actually cut something like this out. Uh, and, and find the difference between making a virtual model and making a real thing. So go make real things.